Hi pals and welcome back to my World of Tanks channel, I'm Antonov2 and today we will be taking a look at this tank here, the SU-85. This tank has got a really really good gun as it is a tank destroyer, the gun can dish out lots of damage over a very short time and it's also pretty speedy and manoeuvrable and can quickly react to changes on the battlefield, however if it, your team sucks or you're left alone to deal with many allies on your own, you will usually lose due to some stats on your tank, for example, your bad view range that will disappoint you in those kind of situations. So, without further ado, let's get stuck into the stats. 350 hit points is very, very low for a tier 5 tank. However, as it's a tank destroyer, we expect it not to have all that much health, and 350 is average for a tier 5 tank destroyer so that's nothing to be ashamed of it only weighs 30 tons well at tier 5 that's still quite acceptable actually but it's not a very heavy tank ramming except for against light tanks and some tier 5 medium tanks is not really recommended in this vehicle it has however got a really powerful engine of 500 horsepower let's see if we can get the power to weight ratio no we can't okay i'm i'm not going to um figure it out for you guys now but it's fairly manoeuvrable and the top speed is really high with 55 kph now usually you won't be reaching that top speed because the party weight ratio is good but it's not like amazing so you'll be usually cruising at 30 to 40 kph but that's still quite fast for a tank destroyer and this is definitely considering that it is a td a really really maneuverable machine it's also got 35 degrees of hull traverse and the gun traverse speed is 44 degrees per second, which is really good. Yeah, so all in all, this tank is very manoeuvrable. It can shift and adjust to changes on the battlefield. The armour, however, is really disappointing. It's only got 45mm of frontal armour, 45 at the side, 40 at the rear. But it's angled very, very well. That means that, especially against low tier tanks, you can pull off quite a few bounces frontally. However, you should never really rely on your armour. And against equally tiered or higher tiered tanks, they'll nearly always penetrate. But you've got this really big gun mantlet here. Any shot going here will usually ricochet. And you've, if you cannot penetrate this tank, obviously you've got weak spots like this hatch here, the cupola up here, this cupola here. Or the lower glaciers but the lower glaciers is really really small so usually if you're in a tier 5 vehicle you can just aim for the center of mass of this tank so long as you don't hit the gun mantlet it will go in the fact that this tank gets 45 millimeters of side arm which is equal to its frontal armor means that you can angle this vehicle in between shots at about this angle here which will increase the sh chance of ricochets a lot and also your gun traverse arc on this tank is really, really big. You can, can uh, traverse your gun over to here and over to here. So if you're angling, you'll still be able to hit enemies situated over here. If you're angling, you hold towards them. So that's a really, really useful feature of this tank. But usually you should not be relying on your armor. This tank is all about its gun as it's a tank destroyer. So usually we expect that. It's an 85mm gun, obviously, because... It's the SU-85, so that's why it's called 85, because it uses an 85mm gun. It's got a really good rate of fire of 10 rounds per minute, that's very good for a tank destroyer. It gets 144mm of penetration, which is amazing at tier 5. And it gets 180 average damage, that's a lot. It's not, like, absolutely outstanding, for example, the French tank destroyer gets a lot more, but combined with a great rate of fire that's very very good also this tank is very accurate with 0.34 accuracy and it's got a decent aiming time at this tier 2.3 seconds so judging from the stats we've looked at so far this tank has to be played as a sniper because the gun's fairly accurate it's got no armor basically the aiming time is decent it's got amazing penetration you want to be sniping or supporting enemies from the second line with this vehicle However, there's a significant drawback with using this tank that way, and that is the view range. It only gets 280 meters view range. That's ridiculously little. If we compare that to the LOL tractor, the LOL tractor gets 310 meters view range. A tier 1 tank has got more view range than this. Uh, okay, you might say the LOL tractor is famous for its good view range at tier 1, so we'll compare it to another tier 1 tank. The SU-85 has got exactly the same view range as the T1 Cunningham, or for example the MS-1. 
It's only got 280 meters view range. That's ridiculously bad. The view range of this tank is really, really poor. And the signal range is nothing to shout about either. But at tier 5, it's still acceptable. It's not very good, but it's all right. The view range is the major drawback of this tank. And this bad view range basically means that if you're in a one-on-one -on -one situation with enemy tanks, for example, at the end of the game, you'll nearly always be at a disadvantage because even some tier 1 tanks can spot you before you spot them. This is absolutely ridiculous. But... One thing that uh, isn't shown about this tank, but that definitely is true for it, is it's got amazing camo values. This tank is very, very difficult to locate. It's just a really stealthy machine, especially if you park it behind bushes. This tank can be very, very difficult to spot. If you want to keep this tank because, I don't know, you really like it or something, I, usually I wouldn't recommend putting any equipment on it because... It's a tier 5 tank and the equipment costs nearly more than the tank. But, I mean, if you want to, you should definitely get the vent and the tank gun rammer. And for a third piece of equipment, you could get the camouflage net. You could get Binox. I'd probably go with Binox because the view range of this tank is so unacceptable that you want to get binocular telescope really or you could also get the enhanced gun lane drive i wouldn't really recommend camouflage net all that much you want to really choose between binocular telescope and enhanced gun lane drive i'd go for for binocular telescope crew skills i would get the camouflage on the entire crew on this tank because it's a tank destroyer it's supposed to stay stealthy as soon as possible you want to unlock six cents on your commander and then for your load of safe storage, obviously. So, having talked about all that, let's quickly talk about the tactics in this tank. I already kind of mentioned it. You want to play this tank as a sniper because of its great accuracy at tier 5. Or as a second or third line support tank. You don't want to be engaging enemies at anything more than medium to long range. You don't want to get any closer than that. Just because this tank hasn't got the armor to cope with enemy shots hitting it. You also have to really rely on your team to do spotting and stuff for you because of your bad view range. Except for if you mount binocs on this vehicle. In which case you can con um, compensate for some of the lack of view range with those binocs. But usually, this tank, yeah, that's a significant weakness. But all in all, this tank can be a really nasty surprise to any tier 5 and even tier 6 and 7 vehicle that meets on the battlefield. And uh, it can really mess up their day. So, yeah, without further ado, let's get stuck into some gameplay and see how this tank performs out there. So, I've spawned on Redshire, obviously me and my SU-85. And it's a pretty good matchup for me. It's only tier 5 tanks in the whole game, so I should be able to do pretty well here. Red Shire in encounter mode is a really good map for tanks, so as a Red Shire in any mode really is a good tank stream map. But I especially like in encounter mode really. What I usually do in my TDs is I head up to this ridge where the T49 is going right now. And then I try to put some sniping fire down. Now, in all my other tanks, I usually go over there where the T-34 is just going to kind of the A1 area. And I always try to put some supporting fire in onto that ridge line. But I'm not really doing that in tank destroyers just because they haven't got turrets and they're less flexible. And you can see there are only two T-34s going over there. Oh, who dude, that KV-1 just shot at me. What are you doing? Stop it. <laughs> Okay, anyway, um, as you can see, there are very few tanks going over there, and if you're not in a medium tank, for example, but in a tank destroyer, you're less flexible, and if you get um, outnumbered by enemies, you will get outmaneuvered very, very quickly, and that's why I don't like going there. So, we put a very nice damage roll into that SU there, about 180 damage, very nice there. So, we can finish them off with our excellent rate of fire, picking up the first kill in the game. And that just, right now, we can also finish off the T-34 because of our really good rate of fire. In other tanks that wouldn't have been possible. So let's see if we can... I fire that one clutch because the, uh, the VK was retreating. But it does, doesn't hit because it wasn't aimed obviously. So I've got a T-49 and Crusader up here with me and also a KV-1. So we should be alright. As you can see the T-34s are being very aggressive flanking round straight away so I figure well okay I'm just gonna push forward 
Now, this is very dangerous what I'm doing here. Because this tank's got so bad key range, enemies will be able to spot me way before I spot them. So, I have to be quite careful here. Let's see, can't hit that Type T-34 there. So, I'm just playing this really aggressively. Just going for it. And there's a BDR G1B there. But he's AFK, obviously. So, I get one shot into him. And come on, reload, 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 and can we finish him off? Ah, good, there's our third kill. Now our team's killed four enemy tanks, and three of them have been killed by me, so that's pretty good. It's looking good till now. Um, yeah, okay, I grant you that that was an AFK guy, so maybe it doesn't really count, but, you know, still, kill is kill. I like kills. So, poking over this ridge, I know there's a VK to me, yep, there he is, okay, so... I get, I'm just, I'm not aiming this shot in sniper mode, he obviously doesn't know that I'm here yet. And he's aiming at me now, and we nearly managed to get our fourth kill on him, but I just missed it by a second. If I had fired the first shot earlier and more clutch, I maybe would have been able to get her fourth kill at this point. But I just wanted to aim it, and because I wasn't going into sniper mode, and because there were that many trees in the way, I wasn't quite sure of my shot. So I think I did the right thing there. And I mean, it doesn't really matter to the, um, like, whether we win or not, because, I mean, it does matter if we win or not, but, um, whether I kill it or somebody else from my team kills him, um, won't really make a difference to whether we win or not, that's what I was saying. Now, we pick up the kill on the RT there, I don't think we spotted him with our bad view range, but it's really good that we pick him up. Uh, our Type T-34's gone blue, you don't know what he does, but, um... He's apologising now, so maybe it wasn't on purpose. And I'm just basically, it's just smash and grab now. I'm just going in max speed, trying to pick up what I can at this point. So there's a Crusader with a very dangerous gun. So I fire my first one. In retrospect, I should have gone to sniper mode there, probably. He's now opening fire at me. Yeah, I really should have gone to sniper mode at that point, really. But it looks like my second shot hit him. He's gone into cover now, so I can't hit him again. Just aiming for the spot where he might come out, but it doesn't look like he's eager to play. So that an AT2, he's got a really dangerous gun and really nasty front alarm. But we managed to snipe his cupola rather clutch. That's really lucky. With an above average damage roll, we could finish him off now. And... Yes, I let it fully aim and get the fifth kill. Which we might even reach top gun in this game. So... You can see one shot hits my track, one bounces there. Okay, I'm in really low health now. I really don't want to poke this corner against the SU-85 because because this tank's guns mounted on kind of the right side of the tank. Uh, okay, good. We're getting very nice damage on the pan before. But what I was saying is because this gun's mounted on the right side, when I poke around this corner, which is a right-hand corner, I will be at the disadvantage because my gun will be closer to the corner. That means he'll be able to shoot me before I'll be able to shoot him. So I really can't poke this corner because I'm on that low health. So I let my teammates finish off the SU. And I really want to get the top one at this point. So I'm just going really aggressively in at the Panzer forward. He's aiming at me so I retreat. And he's as stupid as to come around the corner. And we pick up the top gun with a six kill right at the end. Securing the last kill in the game. That was really good, it was really clutch, but the last one was really funny, that stupid Panzer 4 came off the corner, thinking, oh, I'm going to feast on some SU-85. I don't think so, bro. Okay, so anyway, I hope you enjoyed that game, and that's quickly check out some after game stats. So, we managed to pick up 36,877 credits and 1,414 experience. We also got a top gun and a sniper medal. We can see that we got the most damage on the entire team, um, exceeding uh, the second best damage dealer, which was another SU-85, interestingly, by 300 damage nearly. Oh, I think that's actually, that's 400 damage. It's actually 500 damage, so that's really good. And we also got the most experience on the team, 943 is quite a lot at tier 5. If we look at the detailed report, we can see we fired 14 shots, of which 12 hit and 12 penetrated. That shows the good accuracy and amazing punchy penetration of this gun. Also, we dealt out nearly 1,800 damage, received 3 hits, of which all 3 penetrated. We 
uh, receive 225 potential damage, which is a lot considering that we've only got 350 health. And we detected one enemy, damaged eight, destroyed six, obviously. And we also picked up 364 spotting damage, which is quite interesting because if you think of it, this tank has got really bad view range and signal range, so that's quite surprising actually. Also, interestingly, we got 36,877 credits, of which we could keep 32,711. And that's although we fired lots of shots and nearly lost our entire health. So the repair and ammunition resupply costs in this tank are really low. And that means that this tank is a really good credit owner, because even without a premium account, we would have gotten 20,000 credits out of that game. That's really good. That's nearly as good as uh, tier 8 premium tanks in a below average game but still that's so if you can't afford a tier 8 premium tank check out one of these tier 5 tanks they're good money makers so i hope you enjoyed the game i've only got this one game for you today because i just figured it's a tier 5 tank and uh okay i just i just be honest to you i just haven't got any time and couldn't be bothered today i'm just i'm going to my friend's place later on and i just have to get this video out of the way quickly but also it's only a tier 5 tank so yeah i just figured it probably wouldn't be all that interesting so anyway i hope you enjoyed this review all in all i really must say i like this su85 it's not like my favorite tank in the game but it's a good tank to play through it's definitely one of the best tier 5 tank destroyers and you've got some really good tier 5 tank destroyers you've got the french bathtub on tracks you've got the stug 3 which is really good i really enjoyed playing that but this is really good and i don't like this much as the bathtub probably but still it's probably a close second and uh, it shares the second place with the uh, Stug, which also was really good fun, but I really enjoy this tank. I can really recommend it to you guys. Check it out, even if you only need it as a money maker. It's good fun, and if you're grinding up to the Russian TDs, it's not a bad stepping stone on your way up there. So I hope you enjoyed. Thanks for watching as usual. Make sure to like the video down below if you enjoyed it, or even sub to my channel. I would appreciate that a lot. And I'll see you in one of my next videos or on the battlefield. Bye bye.